Hello world, this is Random Fix, and in this video today I'm going to show you how you're going to be able to pass an emissions test on your BMW by giving you the BMW drive cycle procedure. So it doesn't matter if you have something old or something a little newer, as long as it's 1996 and newer, I'm going to show you how to get this done. And we're not going to be using some big fancy equipment, instead this $20 little scanner, and this is going to get your emission drive cycle ready. Hello world, this is Random Fix. In this video today, I'm going to show you how you're going to be able to set the monitors on your 1996 and newer BMWs. And if you run into any issues, please check out the Smogs Tips playlist because I'll break down each component. And it's a good idea to check out the video titled What to Do to Smog a Car before you go ahead and do the drive cycle procedure. And if you guys want to see the drive cycle in full action, Go ahead and check out the smog check past in 6.4 miles, which I'll actually break down the exact directions on what to do and how you actually conduct the road test. Just so you're not spending hours on the road trying to perform the drive cycle here, it's better to learn some technical parameters. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys two different drive cycles for the BMW. I like the very first drive cycle the best. And then if you have an older BMW, like a 3 Series, I'm going to cover with you guys a little bit of a, a simpler drive cycle. You cannot have any diagnostic trouble codes that are pending. And I'm going to cover this a little bit more in depth. Allow the vehicle to cool off for at least 3 hours. 8 hours is preferred. And make sure that the engine coolant temperature is less than 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And... It's within 11 degrees of the outside air and you want to fill up the gas tank about 75% or you can go full tank. However, it is recommended and from my experiences that the three-fourths tank here is really the sweet spot for most vehicles. Do not turn on the climate control. Do not run the AC. Turn off all the loads like the radio as well except in step two. And do not leave the keys in the vehicle because this may actually keep some monitors from running like the oxygen sensor heater monitor. So the night before you let the vehicle sit, you want to go ahead and lock the doors and keep the keys far from the vehicle. So the car the ignition system doesn't automatically trigger if it detects the keys are too close nearby or inside the vehicle. Avoid engine speeds of over 3,000 RPMs. Avoid driving over 60 miles an hour. And avoid large fluctuations in the accelerator pedal position. And one of the tips that I want to share with you guys is make sure you have a good battery and your alternator is in good operating condition. Because no matter how many times you do this, if your battery is bad or your alternator is weak, this is not going to work. So for a 1996 and newer BMW OBD2, you want to make sure when you're doing the drive cycle procedure here that you follow your local state laws and try to perform this on a freeway when, when there's little to no traffic. And so the morning time is perfect for this. There's some vocabulary that we need to learn so we better understand the procedure. So OBD2 here. It stands for Onboard Diagnostics Type 2. And basically this started in 1996. And before 1996, every vehicle manufacturer had their own port. And it was a big old mess. And with OBD2, everything's simplified. It's a simple connector. And it works for BMW, Minis. If you're driving a Mini Cooper, please check out the video link in the description box below. For that vehicle, the drive cycle is a little bit different. And the same OBD2 connector that works for your BMW will work on a Ford, which is pretty cool, actually. Now I'm going to show you how to hook this up on two different BMWs. The first one is going to be a 2008 BMW. And most of the times on the BMW, it's located in the driver's side wheel well area. And I'm also going to show you on an older BMW 
That's the 1998 7 Series. And on those vehicles, the OBD2 connector can be found in the center right by the shifter. So you want to come to the driver's side. And right here on the left-hand side, you should see a little cover like that that says OBD. And that means onboard diagnostic. And we're going to go ahead and plug in our scanner. The best thing with these scanners is they only go in one way. So you can't get this wrong. And you instantly should have power. Now what you want to do is turn on your ignition. All right, so my key's in the ignition here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on my ignition. And the motor's not running. All right, now that my ignition is on, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And let her do a scan. And as we can see, we got four codes found, three monitors that don't apply, th five monitors that are okay, and three that are incomplete at the bottom here. And we're going to go ahead to read codes, and we can check the engine control module and uh, as well as the transmission control module on this. I'm going to go to engine, and these are the codes. I've already went ahead and corrected this problem. And I'm going to go to the previous menu, which is right here, and hit erase and it says are you sure you want to erase i'm going to go ahead and hit yes okay press any key to continue now i can do a quick exit and rescan and now as we can see we got zero codes found and everything else is going to be the way it's supposed to be and we're going to go ahead and start the vehicle and now my check engine light is off so I'll have a link to the scanner, the one I actually recommend in the description box below. But these little scanners here work really well. The OBD2 port on this vehicle, most of the times they're going to be located right down here in the driver's side footwell area. But on BMW 7 Series and some of the Highline vehicles that come up uh, from BMW, you'll see it right here. So it says OBD2, right? Just OBD. And to do, get to this, we're just going to go ahead and just pull on this. Right, just be very careful. There's little clips, and right behind this cover is going to be the, the actual port. So, this little port right here just slides out. A DTC stands for Diagnostic Trouble Code, and there's two different kinds of diagnostic trouble code that you can retrieve uh, for the powertrain. And one of them is going to be a pending code. So, this is a code that the computer has detected, yet it doesn't have enough information to officially turn on the check engine light versus a hard set code. This code right here, the computer has detected it, it's triggered your check engine light. And if you have a vehicle where the check engine light turns on within seconds of turning on the vehicle, just know that you probably have an open loop situation. Potentially you could have damaged wiring, you could have a broken element in a sensor and the computer doesn't have to really do a lot of diagnostics because it detects that there's something going on. And if any of these are happening here, you will not be able to perform this drive cycle. So go ahead and do the repair and then come back to the drive cycle if needed. MIL refers to malfunction indicator light a.k.a. the check engine light, the service engine light, the service engine soon light, etc. When you're using an OBD2 reader, which you will have to do on your BMW drive cycle because you don't want to go down to the smog station to find out your vehicle monitors are still not complete. So when you're using an OBD2 reader, you want to go ahead and pay attention to the status of each monitor so if a monitor says OK, that means that it's complete, it's set, and it's ready. Versus where it says INC, this stands for incomplete, unset, and not ready. And if one of your monitors says NA, basically that doesn't apply and skip that monitor. And the first monitor here is going to be the oxygen sensor monitor. In most inline four-cylinder vehicles have two oxygen sensor so there's one before the catalyst or the catalytic converter and one after it and the oxygen sensor that's before the catalytic converter is called the pre-cat or upstream oxygen sensor and the one that's after the catalytic converter is called the post-cat 
or downstream oxygen sensor. And oxygen sensors also have on certain vehicles little heater elements built into them. And these oxygen sensor heater elements basically help the oxygen sensor warm up really fast so the vehicle can manage emissions better. EGR is the exhaust gas recirculation. And the CAT is the monitor for the catalytic converter. Some people refer to them as CAT. Some vehicles do have multiple catalytic converters. And the catalytic converter is the part. And the CAT is the actual monitor for the catalytic converter. EVAP stands for Evaporative Emissions Control Systems. And basically, this keeps the fumes out of the atmosphere. And when you're performing a drive cycle test, it's always nice to have a stopwatch so you can time the warm up. Hey guys, really quick, if you're finding this video to be helpful and you're enjoying the content, please consider hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel as well as it lets YouTube and me know that I'm doing a good job and bringing you guys value content. Thanks. So this is the drive cycle procedure that I actually really love for BMWs. And this is going to be an eight step procedure. So the first thing that's really important is the cold start. And when you're performing a cold start, again, you want to make sure there's no diagnostic trouble codes. The check engine light is off and preferably the vehicle has sat for eight hours. And the engine coolant temperature is below 122 and is within 11 degrees of the outside air. And again, we're not going to leave the key in the car because this may prevent certain monitors like the oxygen sensor monitor from running. And step two, we're going to go ahead and start the vehicle and let it idle in gear. So you're going to put the vehicle in drive or in neutral if you have a manual transmission for two and a half minutes with the rear defroster on and also the AC. And if you could turn on your headlights, turn on your headlights. And the more electrical load that you put on the system, the better. And performing step two, runs tests on the passive air, O2 sensor, heater, the purge, the no flow, misfire. And if closed loop is achieved, it'll also run a diagnostics on the fuel trim. Step three. You're going to go ahead and accelerate, but before you do that, you want to turn off the AC, the radio, and any other load, including the rear defroster, and apply half throttle until you reach 55 miles an hour. And make sure you drive in the right lane so you don't cause a, a traffic accident or slow down traffic. And this test will perform the misfire monitor, the fuel trim, and also the purge flow. Step four. You want to go ahead and maintain speeds. You must drive the 55 miles an hour for three minutes. This will run tests on the air intrusion, misfire, O2 response, and the fuel trim. Step five, you want to coast to under 20 miles an hour. So take your foot off the accelerator pedal and do not shift, touch the brakes, or touch the clutch. And this runs tests on the purge, EGR, and the fuel trim. Step six, you want to accelerate again now with three-fourths throttle until 55 miles an hour again. And this will run tests on the misfire, fuel trim, and purge flow. Step seven, you want to maintain speeds again and you want to do the 55 miles an hour for five minutes now. And this will go ahead and run additional tests on the catalytic converter. And if your catalytic converter is old and you have a lot of miles on the vehicle, you may have to do this up to five times to go ahead and complete the drive cycle for the catalytic converter. Step eight, you want to decelerate again. So under 20 miles an hour without touching the brake, shifting gears, or pressing the clutch in and this will go ahead and test the purge EGR fuel trim just like in step five 
And now that you're done with your drive cycle, you want to go ahead and park the vehicle and use the OBD2 reader to go check the monitors. The, the best tip I have for you is when you go connect the OBD2 reader to the actual car to check the status of the monitor, focus on only the unset monitor. So if you're seeing that your EGR hasn't set, you want to focus more on step eight and step five because these really get the EGR ready. And when you get back from your test drive, you want to scan it. And if everything is done, it'll say zero codes incomplete, seven that are complete, and four that don't apply, and zero codes found. And this is a 100% chance that you're going to go ahead and pass your emissions tests as long as you haven't altered anything on your vehicle. And your vehicle passes the visual inspection as well, which I'll cover a little bit later. And this is my drive cycle procedure number two. And this is great for like an older 3 Series. And on this, some of the parameters are going to be from a quarter to tank to about three-fourths tank. Again, three-fourths is recommended. Park on level ground. You want to do a cold start. And you cannot have any diagnostic codes. Avoid engine speeds of over 3,000 RPM. Avoid driving over 60 miles an hour. And again, avoid large fluctuations in the accelerator pedal. So first thing you want to do is start the engine. Let it idle for 2 minutes and 10 seconds. And what this will do is this will go ahead and test the secondary air injection in the EVAP. Then you want to go ahead and start driving. And you want to drive between 20 to 30 miles an hour. Maintain speeds for 3 minutes and 15 seconds. And basically this is going to check for closed loop operation and oxygen sensor response times. Step 3. You want to go ahead and accelerate to between 40 to 60 miles an hour. Maintain a steady speed for at least 15 minutes. And this will go ahead and test the catalytic converter. Now you want to go ahead and decelerate to under 20 miles an hour without touching the brake, shifting gears, touching the clutch, and come to a complete stop. And then you want to let the vehicle idle in gear. So drive for automatic vehicles and neutral for manual transmissions for five minutes. And this will test the EVAP system. And one thing that's really important in step four is if you're having an EGR issue, for example, you want to make sure that you coast to under 20 miles an hour. And this is really helpful right here. And step five, you end the cycle and turn the vehicle off. Step five, turn the vehicle off and plug in your OBD2 reader into the vehicle. Turn the ignition on and check the inspection monitor to see which ones are incomplete. And if there's something that's incomplete, focus only on the unset monitor. Congratulations, so you've set all the monitors on your 96 through 99 vehicle. And if you have a 96 through 99 vehicle, make sure you remember that your vehicle is going to have to get tested at 15 and 25 miles an hour on a dyno. And they're going to go ahead and use a gas analyzer in the tailpipe of your vehicle. They're going to test the gas cap. They're going to do a pressurization of the EVAP system. And they're also going to do a visual inspection. And if your vehicle is 2000 and newer, they're only going to check for the onboard diagnostic readiness test. And they'll also do a visual inspection. So that leads me to tell you guys that every vehicle is subject to a visual inspection. So when you're doing an emissions test, Make sure you don't install any parts on the vehicle that are not state approved like cold air intakes, throttle spacers, and they're going to check for cracked vacuum lines, missing catalytic converters, and they'll also do a visual smoke test where basically they'll push hard on the accelerator to see if the vehicle has any heavy clouds of smoke coming out the tailpipe. And remember, on a BMW uh, that's currently in California. These are the rules right here. 
and rules are always changing and so if you have a 96 through 99 vehicle you could have any one monitor show incomplete on gasoline powered vehicles if you have a 2000 and newer you can only have the evap incomplete and just remember certain smog stations may not still let you pass if your evap is not set all you got to do is go to another smog station or keep driving to go ahead and get that evap ready but just know that that isn't officially the rule that they're supposed to follow but they don't want to lose any points against their license so they'll tell you that it's not ready on diesel powered vehicles 98 through 2006 all of the monitors have to be complete so there is no exceptions here and on diesel powered vehicles 2007 and newer you could have any two monitors that can be incomplete and remember the smog is normally the seller's responsibility and it's due within 90 days of the sale and there's really no way of changing that even if you write as is on the title it is still the seller's responsibility unless you're selling to a dealer or dismantler you always have to provide the buyer with a smog certificate in 99 percent of the cases if the state has an emissions requirement and also remember never buy a vehicle if the inspection monitors are not complete and 99% of the times when the inspection monitors are not complete it's because a, a seller or a dealer has reset the check engine light in order to cover up an existing condition and 1% of the times you can have the monitors be incomplete and the cause could be a dead battery so make sure you really figure out what happened and if a dead battery was the cause of the inspection monitors not being ready you're still going to have to figure out why the dead battery occurred because on BMWs an electrical issue is a complete nightmare and it could cost you thousands of dollars and this is the order that the OBD2 inspection monitors normally get ready so the very first monitor to set is the oxygen sensor heater monitor then the oxygen sensor monitor and then the EGR monitor the catalytic converter monitor and remember if you ever have a case where the catalytic converter monitor and the O2 monitors are both unset focus on the oxygen sensor monitor first as this basically allows the catalytic converter monitor to get set and I'll show you why in a second and the last monitor normally to set is the EVAP. So on a typical four-cylinder motor, you have two oxygen sensors and one catalytic converter. Here we have a diagram, and this is the motor here. This is an inline four-cylinder, and the exhaust comes down the headers past the upstream or pre-cat oxygen sensor through the catalytic converter here and past the downstream or post cat oxygen sensor and basically the way the car actually measures the efficiency of the catalytic converter is the downstream and upstream oxygen sensors basically work together to determine how great this is actually working so if you ever run into a situation where somebody tells you your catalytic converter is bad before you go ahead and swap out this part you want to do a five gas emissions test and figure out if your vehicle is running correctly because if you pop in a new catalytic converter and your vehicle is running too rich you're going to burn it up again so it's always nice to spend maybe an extra 50 60 bucks to test a vehicle before you start swapping out expensive components such as the catalytic converter as they cost thousands of dollars. Once the exhaust is past the downstream oxygen sensor, it goes through a resonator down the tailpipe into the muffler and out to the atmosphere through the exhaust tip right here. On a V6 motor, 
who typically have three to four oxygen sensors and one or two catalytic converters. So here's a diagram of a V6 motor. So it has three cylinders on one side, three cylinders on the other side, and whatever side cylinder number one is located on is considered to be bank one. So if you're using an OB2 reader and you get a code that tells you there may be something wrong with your bank two sensor one oxygen sensor, you would want to pay attention to the side opposite of cylinder number one. Whereas in this case, we actually have cylinder number one here. So the this side is now bank two. And we have one oxygen sensor, two oxygen sensors, three oxygen sensors, and one catalytic converter. And in this example, we actually have a total of four oxygen sensors and two catalytic converters. And this is still a V6 motor right here. On a V8 model, we can have three to four oxygen sensors and one or two catalytic converters. So in this example right here, we actually have one, two, three, four oxygen sensors and two catalytic converters. And in this example right here, we have a total of three, one, two, three oxygen sensors and only one catalytic converter. And here's my eight tips to help you pass your emissions test the very first time. Tip number one, always seek professional repair assistance before you get the vehicle smogged and use an OBD2 reader to make sure that you're gonna pass the very first time because any failed data will be reported to Carfax and AutoCheck, reducing your value of your BMW. Number two, the check engine line should work, but it should be off. However, I have seen many people remove the check engine light from the vehicle. This is private party, dealers, auction houses. I've seen it lots of times. So always put the key in the ignition and make sure that check engine light is there. Number three, inflate your tires. If your vehicle is 99 and older, it will have to get dyno tested and, and properly Inflated tires will reduce the load on the engine. Change the oil on time because on a 96 through 99 vehicle, it's going to get tested on a dyno and you want to go ahead and reduce the hydrocarbons. And when you change the oil on the vehicle, it actually allows for better operation. Step five, take the vehicle for a very long test drive before you get smog inspection done. This way the catalyst in the car gets nice and hot and try to leave the vehicle on at the smog station as you're doing the paperwork. Number six, use fuel additives. I personally love the Lucas Oil Upper Cylinder Lube with Injector Cleaner. It's very affordable and I'll have a link down below. Tip number seven, avoid wet weather because your vehicle is going to get tested on a dyno at speeds of 15 and 25 miles an hour. And this is not to say that your vehicle will not pass if the weather is wet. However, you'll just have better chances. Tip number eight, do not disconnect the battery. Try to use a memory saver and get your battery tested yearly using a load tester. And these are about $20. And tip number nine, if you have a BMW, check out realoem.com and it's a really great website. You go ahead and input the last seven digits of your VIN number and it will show you the original BMW parts catalog for your vehicle. And once you have the part number for a BMW, it's amazing because you could pop that part number in on eBay, Amazon, on the internet and you'll be surprised how affordable the parts are. I've gotten quotes for $1,200 for a part from BMW, and I get a very similar quality part for about 150 bucks on eBay. You'll love the website, realoem.com. And remember, oftentimes the only real solution is to repair or replace the component. There's no such thing as a miracle in a bottle. And some of my preventative tips for your BMW 
are do the easy repairs yourself. So on the BMWs, you want to change the oil yourself. If you have a BMW, it is so easy to change the oil on these cars. A lot of times you can do it without even having to get underneath. So instead of having to make an appointment and waiting around at the dealership for an hour, I can be done with the BMW oil change in 15 minutes, potentially saving myself one or two hundred dollars. Try to do the transmission services yourself. Change the differential fluid on the vehicle yourself. This is super easy. Try to change the air filter, the cabin air filters, the fuel filters yourself. And once you're feeling confident, try cleaning the throttle bodies on some of these vehicles as it really helps as far as the emissions and the way the vehicle runs. Change the wiper blades yourself. You can try the brakes. The brakes on a BMW are so easy. And remember, whenever you're doing any of these repairs, you're learning. And as you learn, you're going to get more confidence and you're going to be able to take on better repairs and do them faster and easier in the future. And I hope the video was really helpful. If it was, please comment down below and let me know how it worked. And if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing. Thank you so much. All right, guys, there you guys go. Your drive cycle is complete. If the video is helpful, make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up. And I really appreciate you guys watching. And if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing as it would really help me out. And it lets YouTube know that I'm doing a good job in bringing you guys value content. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.